Um, it's the last lecture invitation to some more. This is often how I like to end courses. Um, and so I want to tell you about three stories. Again, this is just a, a moose bouche in three areas. Um, uh, Pontryagin classes, which have been pretty well worked out, although, um, as we'll say, I, I, I don't know of a treatment along the lines that I'm going to suggest. Um, the um, characteristic classes then for two other uh, kinds of geometric questions, covering spaces and surface bundles. Um, the covering spaces have been worked out recently and the surface bundles are an open question. So uh, ghosts of Christmas past, present and future or something like that. So um, Pontryagin classes. Well, um, it's, it's a fairly natural translation for us. You see a lot of different uh, 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 definitions out there. I won't bother to write out the details where we modify our dep hat manifold rather than um, dependence, which is the same as existing in um, uh, Lion co-dimension one, we um, we look we take um, um, in and remember we had n minus i plus one or n minus i minus one. We take n minus two. I minus one sections, which um, which lie in not in codimension one, but in codimension I. Sorry, in codimension two I. And then the exercise is I'll give lots of little exercises. Exercise this is um, element of H for I. And this we call pi. And this is going to be h for i of, of a direct sum of e, but of course, then we can pull back the base. And these are the Pontryagin classes. Um, perhaps up to something lower order, there's a good question um, if these are exactly agree with this is Pontryagin's definition. It might differ from what uh, Milner gives. I, I don't think so, but. Um, but here's the, 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 the development that, um, you know, the, the, I think the Whitney sum becomes a harder uh, thing to prove. And in particular, um, there's this connection to uh, quaternionic bundles. Um, I mean, all we care about is, so, so this, by the way, if you have an oriented bundle, um, this is gonna be, so I should say that Pontryagin classes, these are four oriented bundles. And they're a little bit, I mean, if just think of low dimensions and let's go back to our group theory, um, the, the principal bundle point of view for plane bundles, the structure group, well, rather than O2 becomes SO2, which is a circle group. And obviously there, you, that's the same as um, U1. So you're looking at a first churn class. If you, if you uh, go through this, you're actually gonna see the, the characteristic class you'll pick up is C1 squared. So there are some characteristic classes that are not torsion uh, even. Um, there's, by the way, this, this does not um, uh, give you, so these, these um, let me just say these, these span, that 
the cohomology, well, I'll say it this way, the cohomology of BSO with rational coefficients. Um, but, you know, unlike the proofs that we get the cohomology of, um, of real Grassmannians mod two, or the proof that we get the cohomology of quantum complex uh, Grassmannians uh, mod, um, or over the integers, um, I, I haven't seen a uh, development that, that sort of gives us in parallel. So connection to quaternion bundles, any kind of, um, so the quaternions, I assume everyone knows, you've got i, j, k, i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals negative one. Um, it turns out that you can, for example, uh, define, um, quaternionic projective spaces, for example. So, you know, um, doesn't seem, for example, that, um, that, that because the two-dimensional bundles uh, possess these, then it doesn't make sense to say that the quaternion line, quaternionic line bundle over a quaternionic projective space is, is special in the same way. So, um, so the connections to quaternionic bundles and, and quaternionic projective spaces um, I mean again what Milner and Stashev do is rely on a connection a clever uh, connection with complex vector bundle through with complex vector bundles through complexification um, which lets you then import uh, some things we know about churn classes. Um, you also have to look at churn classes under conjugation, but a more straightforward uh, treatment is not one that I've actually seen. I'm guessing that they exist, but I'll um, just say that this is not something that, that I've collected all the ideas as well as I'd like. Um, so then I wanted to talk about a different story. Um, and it's a story that I worked out fairly recently within the last decade. So next, um, and I alluded to this a bit, if you could want to talk about characteristic classes of finite cheated, <laughs> pardon me, finite cheated covering spaces. And over reasonable base spaces, pair compact bases. This is just homology of BSN. But um, what I want to say is that there, there's a, um, a a sort of a Schubert geometry, Schubert inspired geometry. So this idea of, of linear dependence of sections, that's tough. You might think about something like that, like maybe discontinuity of sections if you, if you wanted to. Um, but, but instead, the, the Schubert-inspired geometry would say, um, and again, this is, a, this is kind of an open question within the context of this lecture series to understand this change of basis, but it says you've got a, a, a vector bundle. So I've got my base, and I've got my fibers, um, and let's assume it's it's embedded in a trivial bundle. So actually my bundle, like the Mobius bundle, kind of twists around. And and again, we were using these embeddings. Um, well, one, we, we use such an embedding to make sections in the case of tautological line bundles, but you could more generally ask, for these Schubert conditions to hold? When does that vector space um, satisfy the conditions that are specified in a Schubert cell? So that would be a, uh, a, the Schubert basis for, uh, for either Stiefel-Whitney or uh, churn, churn, you know, complex, real or complex characteristic uh, classes. And again, I think it's a, a non-trivial change of basis with the, the churn classes. And I'll also leave that as a question which is known, but just not to me. So you've got the Schubert basis. 
And for BSN, well, you can play the same game. Here's our base. We've got this covering space. And if we embed it in some uh, trivial Euclidean bundle, not really considered as a vector bundle now, I don't need any, um, I'll just need the affine structure. Then inside each uh, fiber, uh, the, the covering space is gonna give me a finite uh, set of points and it's unordered. So the, 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 the fibers uh, give me, uh, so the fibers are elements of, um, well, my favorite way to just say this is R capital D for the dimension they're in, choose N. So that's in, so that's configurations of endpoints in RD mod SN. So, um, so, but there then, um, so that's this, this Schubert, like, um, well, that's the classification theorem uh, in both settings. And now the Schubert like idea is you can look for the locus in the base or loci such as, you know, um, the, 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 there are four points in that RD in that configuration, which share their first chord. And maybe two additional points, which I don't know, share their first five. And these are conditions that you can imagine. Notice I'm using powers of two because I'm gonna report on the mod two story. The mod P story is a little more involved as it often is. So this, by the way, is co-dimension three. This, two points sharing first five coordinates, that's co-dimension five. So it's an element of H8. And this Schubert kind of geometry, I've sort of attached a graphical naming system to. In this case, it would look like this, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so something like this is a naming scheme for these characteristic classes. There's a couple natural products, one which is uh, sort of reflects deeper and deeper coordinates being shared, and the other is sort of putting conditions on most, more points. And uh, this is actually encoded in a Hopfring structure. So, um, so it turns out that if you, if you don't think about linear dependence, but if you think about uh, instead of vector spaces intersecting a flag, you think about finite points sharing coordinates, uh, you actually are on to the, the right kind of geometry to understand uh, cohomology of uh, symmetric groups, i.e. Uh, finite sheeted covering spaces. Um, and the other, the, um, One, one thing there is that we know from, you know, basic uh, first year algebraic topology that finite sheeted covers also have to do with finite index subgroups. Be interesting to, to see if there's a, you know, how these, this cohomology interfaces with standard group theory, subgroup theory. Okay, then the final thing I wanted to say is uh, for surface bundles, And and this is an invitation to, to play with these ideas. And again, I think there might be some combination of these ideas. So for surface bundles, so I've got again some base and the fibers are surfaces. 
And once again, if I embed them in, uh, say, a vector bundle or an affine bundle is fine, um, then I can look for vertical tangents, um, you know, places where the, the, the if I've got a, um, where the tangent vector is, uh, tangent vectors to the surface are, um, you know, not along the, um, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that informal vertical tangent vectors. So the, the, uh, the loci of vertical tangent vectors are one way to, to construct the Mumford classes. And then very recently, uh, well, at least in, in my book, uh, post my PhD, so I think of this as uh, modern, Madsen and Weiss in, in 2000 show that these are all stable characteristic classes, in other words, independent of a genus over Q. That's the Mumford conjecture. But there's we we now know through the thesis of Soren Galatius, and he's now done uh, a lot of other things, there's plenty of plenty more mod two cohomology. And no one has played with that geometrically. And what I want to say is that these, that one thing to consider there, or lots of things to consider there, would be within the Schubert context, right? And take our, our surface bundle. Again, maybe if we find something independent of genus, you can think of it as high genus, it doesn't matter, but take your surface bundle uh, embedded in a trivial Euclidean bundle, and then look for, for example, um, you know, looking at Galatius's answer, I wonder if, if there's four vertical tangencies, and then within the, um, within the greater space, those points at which the vertical tangent, um, tangents lie in the surface, maybe they share a coordinate or something like that. So I have some conjectured forms for what some of this additional cohomology of surfaces would be. This is an area that impacts uh, three manifold theory, algebraic geometry. We, um, yeah, a lot of people would like to understand um, surface bundles better. Uh, even the group itself of automorphisms, if you think about the whole principal bundles, uh, the, the structure group is called the mapping class group. So that's what, that's the ways a surface can kind of come back and be glued to itself, if you will. Um, the mapping class group itself is mysterious. Its cohomology is very mysterious. Um, plenty of open research. And I would hope that some of the, the perspective on characteristic classes uh, that I gave might help someone who's learning this to one day say more about that story. All right, I think I'm gonna call that a day. It's been a pleasure. Um, I might add to these lecture series or I might not, but 